that day. Um, so I had a question, two questions actually come in. Um, I'm going to deal with one of them this morning. And um, again, any question you may have, I'll do my level best to try to give you a biblical answer. Um, so the question is, if I am with Jesus in the grave, right, that's what we have been studying. We've seen that from Jesus' teaching in John chapter 11, and we've seen that from Paul's teaching, right, in 1 Thessalonians and also in the book of 1 Corinthians. But if I'm with Jesus in the grave and that shout, right, from 1 Thessalonians 4 comes forth, he has his gifts according to my works. We read that in Revelation 22. He says, I'm coming and my reward is with me to give to each one according to his works. Now, the part, next part is, it says, I'm with Jesus in heaven, being for eternity with him. What does works mean? So open your Bibles with me, if you will. We're going to go to the book of Revelation. And gentlemen, if you can bring my mic down just a little bit. I'm a little too loud. You can't? Okay, because it just sounds a little echoey to me. But maybe I need to speak up, use my preaching voice. How's that? Go with me to Revelation 20. Did I say 22? I'm sorry if I did. Go with me to 20, 20 Revelation 20. Revelation 20, find verse 11. When you find verse 11, give me a hearty amen. Let me know you're with me. Amen. Anybody needs more time, you know the drill. What do you say? You ask for mercy. We'll give you mercy. All right, let's look at this together. This is in the context. It's, it's the little subheading again that the editors have put in there. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment. Tonight we're going to talk about judgment. But judgment happens really in, in three phases. Um, God's judgment of all the people who have lived on this earth and those who really have existed in the universe. And, and I don't have time to break it down right now, but this is really the third phase of God's judgment. So it says, John saw in this vision, I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose faith the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and what was opened? Books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And so we have this, this context that there are books that are recording something, okay? And that second book is referred to as the book of life. And in other places, it's referred to as the Lamb's book of life. It's, it's the same reference, okay? And it really is just a record. It, it's a record of those who have chosen to live for God. So if you had to choose today to be out of the book of life or in the book of life, where do you want to be? Right, That's a pretty silly question. We want to be in the Lamb's book of life. But notice, those who are not found in the Lamb's book of life, it says that their works, they were judged, and the dead were judged according to their what? To their works. And so, just a simple look, um, if you, you can use a concordance, or uh, I've had some training with biblical Greek and Hebrew, so I have biblical Greek and Hebrew Bibles uh, on my computer, my iPad, my phone, and you look it up, and it's just the Greek word ergon, okay? And ergon is just simply translated as deeds. So NASB, if you look at the New American Standard Bible. So really, when it says that your, your works follow you, remember Revelation 14, we read last night, that blessed are they that die in Christ. Why? Because they rest from their labor, and what follows them? Their works follow them. So really, it's just a Bible simple way of saying that your deeds matter. <laughs> what you do Ma what you do matters. Now, please understand this. There is not a single instance in Scripture that says that your deeds, your works, are meritorious. So what does that mean? Well, merit means that I've gained favor. There is nothing about your works or my works that gain us more favor with God. There is nothing you can do to make God love you more, and there's nothing you can do that takes away from God's love for you. Now, are there times where God may get irritated or frustrated with our behavior? Well, we saw that. Exodus chapter 4, when Moses was making all of his excuses for not going back to Egypt. Oh, Lord, I can't talk. Lord, I'm slow of speech. Oh, Lord, you know they're going to try to kill me. I left there as a fugitive 40 years ago. It says that the anger of the Lord burned against Moses. So God can get irritated with our, our, our stubbornness, our stiff-neckedness, our hard-headedness. 
But really, your works are simply what you have done. And James tells us that faith without works, do you know the rest of the verse? Is dead. So here is, here's kind of how it happens. You and I fall in love with Jesus. We love him because the Bible says he first loved us. And he loved us, Romans chapter 5 tells us, while we were yet sinners. And so out of that love response, now that I'm in love with Jesus and I want to live for him, I want to walk with him, right? I want to be his disciple. There are going to be things that happen in my life that I'm seeking to honor God with my behavior. I don't seek to do things to win favor with God. I just want to honor him with my life because I do love him. Do you see that relationship? Some Christians get it backwards. They think, well, let me do all these good things and, you know, let me put my checklist together. And because I can go through the checklist, God's going to love me more. And, and then when we get that mentality, I'll look, well, it's not Thomas, you're not as holy as I am because you don't do the things I do. So I'm better than you are. Foolishness. <laughs> Absolute foolishness. It has no place in the Christian experience. You don't look to other people and compare how good you are. You look to Jesus. Amen? And compared to Jesus, how good are any of us? Your righteousness, Isaiah 64 says, is nothing but filthy rags. So what will we have in heaven? Well, the Bible talks about a new heavens and a new earth will be created. So do you think we're just going to sit idle in the new earth, or do you think we'll be doing things? I think we're going to be very busy. Rebuilding this earth, right? And so I think these works are simply a statement if it's our response, it's how we live as a response to God's love in our heart. Hope that helps a little.